um, mm-hmm. people believed that they were called racists or bigots if they didn't like the story. That's not why they were called racists or bigots. They right. were called racists and bigots because, <laughs> because they're they were racists and bigots. And bigots. <laughs> Uh, Leslie Headland and Kathleen Kennedy had a couple comments in a New York Times article um, that was promoting, of course, the acolyte, and it put people back on their heels. Kathleen said, "A loud primordial part of the Star Wars fandom has pushed back in perfect, uh, has pushed back in predictable fashion against the show. Why are there so many women, girls, and minority characters increasingly dominating the ranks of the Jedi?" Reads a comment uh, on the acolyte trailer. Some trolls have called it the woke My My favorite quote is from Leslie Headland, who says, as a fan myself, and there's multiple pieces to this quote, so I want to take this quote apart because I think it's important. Mm-hmm. As a fan myself, she says, I know how frustrating some Star Wars storytelling in the past has been. Okay, good. So what she's saying there is she's agreeing. Not every single story that's come out in the last five, ten years has been brilliant, has been perfect, right. or been in line with what we might expect. She said, I felt it myself. So she's a fan and it's, that's been proven. She's been out on the carpet. She's been talking about it. She's she, she, and she, just to add to that. Yeah. If you've seen the video that it came out today of her and Dave yeah. Filoni. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh. Like I watched it three times. It's two and a half minutes, but it's two people who clearly are star Wars fans who yep. love star Wars and are able to create star Wars. And that conversation, I think I tweeted it. Like, this is what it's about. And, you know, she has the bona fides to do what she's doing. No question about it. Absolutely. And she even goes on to say, I stand by my empathy for Star Wars fans. Meaning, Mm -hmm. hey, guys, I get it. We're all there. I mean, we we just did a whole three hours on this the the sequel trilogy. Um, However, she says, but I want to be clear. Anyone who engages in bigotry, racism, or hate speech, I don't consider a fan. Now, this is very similar to what Ewan McGregor said uh, when Obi-Wan came out and Moses Ingram was taking uh, um, Mm -hmm. um, the hits. Here's the challenge. We know this is coming. We know we're going to get pushback. We've already seen, we've seen it from the (laughs) instant uh, the show was announced. We saw it at Star Wars Celebration over a year ago when Leslie Headland came out on stage. Um, People talking about how they don't like the show. Uh, It's got, it's got women in it. It's got people of color in it. It's got LGBTQ in it. They try to hide behind uh, behind saying, you know, it's just a fair criticism. Just because I don't like a character doesn't mean I'm racist or a bigot. And and that is true. But if that's what you're leading with before you see a single frame of the film, yeah. the only thing you can already possibly be basing it on is what you're seeing as as represented. My challenge, though, is. We are now a week before the show. We are in this this hype zone, as we just talked about with uh, with Holly and Brian. Um, does it help? Does it get in the way to be proactively, preemptively striking this particular area of the fandom? To me, it feels like by going to the New York Times and saying, hey, it's hard to be a woman in the Star Wars fandom, which is another quote um, from from Kennedy. I, I I paraphrased it. But going down that road when we're just a week away, is it because the trolls and the grifters are already in that zone? Does it make it valuable to get there? Or are they are they creating some fire that doesn't need to 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 be fanned right now? And you go back to like what happened with Obi Wan and with Moses Ingram and you know Ewan and his car doing that video. Yep. Like she was directly you know, attacked and harassed. And there were some things going on. I think we're at a point where what Leslie Headland said and what Kathleen Kennedy said, I wholeheartedly agree and support. Yep. If this is where you start, you're not really a fan. You don't, you've missed the point. You've missed the boat. This isn't the spot for you. Um, Right. Well, that's just, yeah, a hundred. I mean, that's, that's a great point to bring up because the only people who are getting pissed off about this, nobody, nowhere does she say that, (laughs) <laughs> that you can't have a, a fair critique. Let me read the quote exactly so we get it right because it's it's important. She says, Kathleen Kennedy says, operating within these giant franchises now, so not just Star Wars, with social media and the level of expectation, it's terrifying. I think Leslie yeah. has struggled a little bit with it. I think a lot of the women who step into Star Wars struggle 
with this a bit more because of the fan base being so male dominated. They sometimes get attacked in ways that can be quite personal. Now, this is where the uh, where the 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 big the bad <laughs> the bad intention people come in and say, see, they're saying all male fans are a problem. And again, right. to what you were saying, Nick, if you think they're talking to you, they, they probably are, are. right? Yes. If you see yeah. that, and, and that's just really, honestly, that's it. it. Let's take everybody else out. If I look at that quote, I go, yeah, you know, I can imagine being a, a woman in a male dominant, because I also see, and we've seen, we see it with friends of ours. We have many uh, female fans on, on, on our, our social media platforms and we've become friends with them and the things that they get thrown at them. Nobody it's it's ugliness. It starts at the most base, gross ways to attack a woman. Mm -hmm. They start there and then they say, and you're not a fan. And so it has nothing to do with the characters. Uh, it has nothing to do with the people she's saying. It's a difficult thing. But again, leading with that a week before the show, it's it's I. I get it. And I'm not saying it's wrong yeah. because they have to fight it. They have to, they have to make more noise than they are, but they're making well, them make more noise. I think the challenge, and I think kind of coming back to the point that you're trying to make is if we have to say it before every show or every new thing that comes right. out, it feels like it wants to be preemptive in a well-intentioned way. Sure. Yep. But what's happening is, those shitheads that still exist. And, you know, honestly, it's squeaky wheel gets the grease. The ones that are making money off of it, the ones that are getting it for clicks, the ones that are doing whatever. What they're doing is when Disney or Lucasfilm or somebody makes that comment, they go, oh, they're saying this now. This must be terrible. Right. They're already on life support and it hasn't even dropped yet. But it, it's the problem is now it's a vicious cycle. This is where Star Wars fandom is. This is why in common places you see people say things like nobody hates star wars like star wars fans because what has happened is we've gotten to a situation where we have um you know back around uh, the sequels um mm -hmm. people believed that they were called racists or bigots if they didn't like the story that's not why they were called racists or bigots they were right. called racists and bigots because <laughs> because they're they were racist and bigots, and, bigots. Right. and and then they hid behind that and said well that means that the story is crap and if i and then they they were able to create a crusade that said um if i don't like this it's because i am i'm i'm on the bigot side of the world well yeah. The reality is, and if again, if you watch our three-hour marathon talking about sequels, I, I didn't love all the sequels, and not a single piece of it is because there was a black stormtrooper or a woman lead or whatever. Um, and so they have created this vicious cycle. And so, so now, no matter what happens, no matter what happens, by doing the preemptive strike, they they can now get out there and say, well, this is this is because it's crap, and they want to set it up so that we can't dislike right. it. And this is why right. I'm not quiet about it. And this is why when people say, just turn off your mm -hmm. brain, don't look at it, I can't because of being a decent human being, I have to comment on it. However, this is now this has to become part of the marketing strategy every time Disney and Lucasfilm release something. Is how are we going to combat the assholes that are going to be out there? So I guess then the question becomes. And this is why doing it in the New York Times is why I have a question about it. Because right. is it is it such a loud voice that it leaks beyond what you and I see on a daily basis on social media? Are the quote unquote common folk who love Star Wars on TV, are they seeing any of it? And if they're not, does creating a story in New York Times where they may, where where the average person may not see this con, con, sort of content, um, are they now drawing attention to it? Uh, you know, it's like when I, I hate to name names, but it's like when Star Wars Theory was mentioned on NBC TV for his his bigoted comments about women aren't Star Wars fans. It got that level of attention. Suddenly, it is in the mainstream. It is no longer just the um, it's no longer right. just the people in that. 15 20 percent who who are all over the ones that complain the ones that bring this that make us have these conversations these are for the most part basement drill basement dwelling trolls yeah people who don't have happiness in their life and this is what you know their endorphin hit comes from 
riling somebody up on social media, yep. going after somebody else, screaming into a void that doesn't care, that doesn't want to hear from them. The challenge, though, is, is Lucasfilm addressing this stuff in mainstream media helping them? Is it helping these guys make money now? Is it helping them get clicks? If they ignore, let, let's put it this way. Let, what if they ignored it? What if Leslie and Kathleen did not mention anything about the bigotry, the misogyny and the sexism that has come along with star Wars, specifically this show by bringing this up in mainstream, does this, does this help star Wars? Does it help Leslie? Does it help this show? Or does it only help the assholes who are going to make money who get to now say, Catholic, based on that one quote that I read, they hate men. They're blaming men. See, Star Wars does not want men. They want to knock them out. They're calling it a girl brand. They're trying to, they're trying to take a, right. a male-dominated show or franchise and make it for girls. When that's not it. If we have to do this preemptively every time something comes out, are we signaling for something? that may or may not happen, but the reality is... Well, we know it's going to happen, shit, though, right? Shitheads yeah. are going to be shitheads. Yeah. It, you know, carve it in stone, write it down, make a t-shirt out of it, sew it onto your, you know, favorite cross-stitch pillow. Assholes are going to be assholes. Like, you right. can't change that. You can't fix that. But it then becomes the question of, okay, so if they talk about it, if they do their thing, are they giving it more attention than it deserves? Right. And I, I we certainly don't have an answer, but I will say that it is... It is getting exhausting that every yeah. single show, because, hey, when uh, when Skeleton Crew comes out, there's going to be complaints about that. 